Very frequently pictured with former President Barack Obama has just been caught up in a whole slew of allegations related to trafficking. Now, just last month, federal agencies, federal officials have raided the Los Angeles and Miami homes of uh, musician Sean Diddy Combs and seven separate lawsuits, one of which was actually filed with his uh, his former girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, uh, provided some details regarding several allegations, including uh, one of them I can't really say, but abuse and drugging are just a few. Uh, what's going on, guys? I hope you guys are able to see and hear me okay. Uh, we got a lot going on here, and it's funny how some of the same individuals who are going after Donald Trump are also involved in this in this Diddy scandal, this P. Diddy scandal. So uh, we're definitely going to get into it. If you're able to see and hear me okay, just drop me a quick hello in the comment section, and also hit the like button uh, for the video. I really, really do appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for also sharing these videos on Facebook and Twitter. We have a lot to get into today. Tonight, the New York Post is reporting that alleged victims of Diddy have been talking a lot. And we're hearing a lot of people in Diddy's orbit, names you know, are very worried. Derek Parker is a former member of the NYPD's Rap Intel Unit, and he joins me now. You had dealings with Diddy. Ooh, it's going to heat up tonight. Diddy back in the day. What was that like? Well, I dealt with him when he had problems with the assault and... Uh, he had the, the shooting at Club New York back in those days. So I was probably the detective that was assigned to go out and investigate what happened at those uh, particular locations with us. All right, guys. So we got a lot to cover today. Um, but as discussed by Fox News host Jesse Waters in his program, that's who you were listening to just now, uh, the disgraced billionaire hip hop mogul and Democratic Party community organizer, uh, with subpoenas raining down on him left and right, Sean Diddy Combs' inner circle is getting squeezed. So his alleged drug mule has already been handcuffed. Uh, Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Young Mommy, who allegedly transported his pink cocaine on private jets, she's feeling the heat. And the question that investigators are looking to answer is who else was involved in this thing? Well, if you ask Diddy's ex-bodyguard Gene Deal, well, he thinks that uh, Diddy's celebrity friends are pretty much just kind of keeping quiet because his entire house was taped and bugged. Secret hidden cameras everywhere. Have you guys heard about this? Let me know if you've heard anything about this, guys. And what do you think is going on with Diddy? Who do you think is hemmed up in here? Now, according to him, it's not only the celebrities um, that are going to be shook. He had, guess what, guys? He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. He also had a couple of preachers in there. Like, you guys hear this? Politicians, preachers, you guys. This is crazy. And coincidentally enough, right about the time um, that this was actually coming out about Diddy, Fox News published an article about how he's been like a prolific supporter of Democrats. Hmm. Rather interesting, huh? So Diddy Combs has leveraged his stardom and his fame to kind of back many different Democrats during his career, including President Joe Biden during the 2020 presidential elections. Right. And in what looked to be an attempt to persuade black voters. Now, he even had that friendly looking photo with Obama uh, several years back. But now on the topic of very questionable Democrats, we have none other than former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Did you guys hear that? Oh, yeah. So Nancy Pelosi just announced that she's running for re-election in November. So a lot of people are wondering, hey, let me know, guys, does this come as a shock to you that Nancy Pelosi is running again in November? Like she's 83 years old trying to get up in here. Like, what's going on with the age limitations here? What, I, I, let me know if you think that there should be some age limitations uh, placed on uh, members of Congress, or should there at least be some kind of like uh, preliminary uh, mental fitness tests? Let me know what you guys think on that one. So people are wondering, why is this 83-year-old uh, former Democratic leader still willing to go through all these different politics? Well, multimillionaire 
real estate mogul Grant Cardone, he's, he had something to say about it. So in a recent podcast, uh, Grant Cardone, he singled out Nancy Pelosi claiming that she's never made more than $179,000 a year. Yet, miraculously, her net worth is estimated to be around $120 million. So basically, they're saying that being in government may be like a cheat code when it comes to accumulating wealth and that some politicians may be, benef may be benefiting from undisclosed financial opportunities, if you know what I mean. Now, what do y'all think about that? You think uh, there's some under, under the table deals that these politicians are benefiting from? Who we got in the comments tonight? We got Sheila. What's going on, Sheila Hayron? Uh, we got Robin Spielman. We got Donna Galloway, uh, Kenneth Thompson, Myra, uh, Julie Hargrove, Gail Strong. Awesome. Appreciate you guys checking in. All right. So uh, Sean Diddy Combs. It's a whole mess, guys. It's a it's a it's a mess. OK, uh, you thought you thought Fannie Willis and Letitia James were a mess. This is this is big. And you're going to be I'm going to share more and more information with you guys over the coming weeks. But I think you're going to be really surprised at how many people are going to get pulled into this thing. Think people you would have never guessed. So uh, just take a wild guess who you think is going to get pulled into this whole Diddy mess. Hit me up down below. So Fox News host uh, Jesse Waters is talking about it with uh, former NYPD uh, rap intelligence unit um, Derek Parker on his show. Take a listen. Take a listen to what he's saying here. When his boy went down, now you see him at the top. I mean, billionaire, all the hits. He's mentoring everybody in the business. But there's some sinister things happening under the surface, according to this lawsuit. Did you see that coming? Yes. When I saw the, the payoff with Cassie, and I saw that come out and how that was quickly taken care of, I knew things were going to come after this. I knew that there were going to be the, other people. The payoff with Cassie, I heard, was like a record-breaking uh, payoff speed. Like, I heard, like... And I don't 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 quote me on this. I I heard it was something like I think she might have been asking for somewhere around. She may have been asking somewhere around a couple hundred million dollars for all I know. And I heard that it got paid off in like a, a few hours. So <laughs> something was going on, I think. People that were going to follow in line or people that he had past relationships with that were going to probably come forward and bring up allegations of his conduct and things that he's done. When you hear about the sex trafficking, the hidden cameras in every room, the narcotics, paying off law enforcement, the affiliation with gangs, how do you interpret that? Well, that's some that's uh, an allegation that someone else made about what happened. Right. The, the guns and the narcotics and things like that, these things happen in, in this business. It's, it's out Typical. there in the hip hop world. I mean, I've come along a lot of cases where I've had rappers involved with drugs and guns and things like that. So I'm not surprised by that. But the government took a, a, a big step in waiting on this to come out and do this. They had this planned. Believe it or not, this is planned. I think even tonight, uh, Diddy's uh, girlfriend, Young Mommy, was uh, caught distributing drugs. So she's been uh, labeled as indicated in the, re the uh, federal report as uh, supplying drugs, they count and paying people off. So this is only the start of this investigation. You're wow, guys, the FBI, they don't mess around. When they finally decide to kind of swarm in and, and actually take action, typically it's because they have mounting evidence and their success rate at, uh, you know, bringing cases to court and winning is unbelievable. It's remarkable. Um, so, uh, yeah, so as Waters said recently, for two decades, Diddy, thought he was untouchable. Now his world is crumbling. So TMZ has been all over this story. Let me know if you guys heard anything about this, revealing that uh, the federal case against Diddy is expanding. So again, just like the officer, just like the uh, detective on uh, Jesse Waters show just mentioned, um, the situation, uh, this is just tip of the iceberg. It seems that the Southern District of New York uh, prosecutors, they're, they're really looking to broaden their scope. Um, they're handing out subpoenas to multiple corporations that are tied to Diddy, um, like cell phone providers and uh, computer companies. And in what looks like no coincidence, Diddy has been allegedly offloading his major assets. 
like shares in Revolt TV and music rights from Bad Boy Records. Now, you would almost think it's like a fire sale for Diddy at this point. Everything must go. Wonder why, though. So the feds are even targeting his private jets and might soon start subpoenaing the uh, commercial airlines and possibly even the FAA to track down anyone and everyone who might have flown with Diddy. So, yeah, they're not only looking for the victims, but they're also looking for more witnesses and people with unfettered, uh, unfettered access to Diddy, um, you know, knowledge of Diddy's crimes, possibly, and these freak off parties. And some inside of uh, Diddy's world have already started talking. I mean, Diddy's former bodyguard said he's going to go on. He's willing to go on the stand. Now, Diddy's world definitely seems to be shrinking as those who are very close to him are feeling some pressure and his alleged former drug mules. They've already been arrested, according to, you know, uh, multiple outlets. Uh, even Diddy's ex, Young Mommy, was reportedly sweating it out over accusations of transporting pink cocaine for him on his private jets. I mean, I don't know anything about drugs, but I didn't even know cocaine came in pink. I didn't know it was an option. Um, must be some new stuff. Now, investigators are digging deep. <laughs> investigators are digging deep. Um, and they've seized all of Diddy's uh, surveillance footage, uh, hard drives, phones, just trying to piece together who's been in and out of these properties and in and out of his planes. Now, according to a lawsuit from Little Rob, it wasn't just kind of up and coming artists getting caught up in uh, Diddy's net. Celebrities, politicians, athletes, international dignitaries, um, music label executives apparently were all allegedly captured on on camera in Diddy's compounds. Can you imagine? I mean, can you imagine if you saw judges on there, uh, former presidents, just politicians that you're familiar with in your own state? I mean, priests, athletes, celebrities, like the list goes on and on. International dignitaries, for God's sake, right? This Isn't this crazy, guys? Like, what do y'all think about this? Like, name someone who you think would be the wildest name that you could ever imagine showing off on one of Diddy's cameras and one of these compromising tapes. I just want to I just want to hear some predictions out here, guys. What do you guys think? Um, oh, wow. So Lynn, Lynn Stegman says it's coke. It's cocaine, MDMA and shrooms mix. Wow. Uh, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> um, so Keenan Ripon says the Pope. What's going on, Catalia? Um, let's see. Uh, Dale Hooper says I'll grab the s'mores. Wow. So I, I, I can't wait to see what kind of names you guys throw in here in terms of, OK, somebody's already thrown Epstein in there. So Diddy's ex bodyguard Gene Deal confirms this as well, basically saying that Diddy's celebrity friends, they're keeping quiet because his entire house was taped and it was bugged. And I, I wonder how many people knew this, because if, if they did, like, I wouldn't even go to his house. Would you go to Diddy's house? That just doesn't seem like a wise move. You know, who knows? You go in there sober, you might get a little, you know, whiff of something in the air. Who knows? And next thing you know, you do something that you wish you didn't. And it's all on hidden camera, audio recorded, possibly. Who knows? Right. So Deal said in a recent interview how it's not only the celebrities that are, that are going to get shaken up by this, but he had politicians up in there. He's had princes in there. He's also had uh, a couple of preachers in there, allegedly. Right. The People's Call uh, expose them. The People's Call expose them and get these squatters out of the White House and other places of power. Can you imagine if, like, some of these people who show up on these hidden cameras are actually in the White House right now? Like, can you imagine? Katalia's got her popcorn. So he also cited Little Rod's uh, lawsuit, mentioning how. Uh, Diddy's entire house was allegedly equipped with cameras and audio recording devices. I mean, I I'm sorry. If if I have a friend that has a house that's bugged like that, I ain't going to I'm not going to their house anymore. And I'm going to have to seriously question whether or not we need to remain friends. Um, yeah. So he said that 
by them having these things in the house and people know that there's drugs and there's alcohol, there's loose women and there's loose men, all kinds of crazy stuff happens. And they're just wondering who or when they're going to actually let this stuff be known. So um, let me know if y'all want me to keep you up to date on the courtroom drama that is soon to follow on that. Now, just for starters, here are some of the famous people that um, have been confirmed to be named in uh, some of the lawsuits with Diddy. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is because the list is kind of long, I'll, I'll just leave a list for you guys in the comment section. I'm not going to bore you with this whole list. But anyway, so news outlets, they're also associating Diddy with Democrats as he has been the staunch supporter of the political party during his career. Now, Sean Diddy Combs has leveraged his stardom and his fame to, to back Democrats during his career, including President Biden during the, during the uh, 2020 elections. Um, in what looked to be an attempt to persuade black voters. I feel like 2024, it's going to go a little, little bit differently. But anyway, uh, especially if you saw what happened with Donald Trump and that Chick-fil-A uh, just the other day. Uh, if you guys did not check out that video uh, that I did just uh, two lives ago, check out that video with Donald Trump uh, where he walked in that Chick-fil-A. Uh, that woman went crazy in there. It's a black woman, and she just, she pretty much... Uh, you know, her her reaction was totally unexpected. Anyway, so check out that video after this one. It's like two lives ago. Anyway, so Diddy, he was part of a group of dozens of black individuals who sent a letter to Joe Biden in August of 2020, urging him to select a, a black vice presidential candidate, hence Kamala Harris. So did Diddy basically coerce uh, Joe Biden to select a the black vice president that we have today, Kamala Harris. Like, did did, did Diddy actually make that happen? I'm, I'm just wondering, what do y'all think on that? So anyway, so uh, Combs has also appeared to be very friendly with former President Barack Obama. Tons of photos with Diddy and Barack Obama, uh, seemingly mad cool. Um, in 2004, he interviewed the then Illinois state senator for uh, MTV's Rock the Vote campaign. I don't know how many of you guys watch MTV, but when I, you know, when I was growing up, I used to watch MTV a lot. I don't, I don't even know what channel MTV is on now. But anyway, so back in the day, he interviewed the he was uh, the then Illinois state senator for uh, MTV's Rock the Vote campaign, and later appeared pretty friendly with him in pictures that were posted on social media. So then like his, his caption on that September 2017 Facebook post showing a picture of him and Barack Obama. Uh, this week has been great. Shout out to the King Barack Obama is what he said. Hashtag black excellence. And then, of course, conversely, Sean Combs said that white men like Donald Trump need to be banished. And it, it was just wild that he actually said that now. Sean Combs' defense for those raids in his home? Well, his attorney, Aaron Dyer, said those that they were a, a gross overuse of military force, um, you know, and, and that, you know, there, there's been no findings of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Now, that last part's where it really got me. So, listen, you guys. They called it a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil fraud law based based on civil lawsuits. Can you believe this? They called it a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in the civil fraud uh, lawsuit. Now, where have we heard that before? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think Donald Trump's going through very th through something very similar to that. Right. So anyway, so Diddy who's been an established supporter of the Democrats, is now crying witch hunt. Same as what's happening with former President Donald Trump with all of his legal cases, isn't it, right? So there's definitely something that's going on behind the scenes here, guys. What do y'all think? So um, anyway, if, if you haven't already at this point, hit the like button for the video, go ahead and do so, and make sure that bell icon is hit as well so that you guys are notified as soon as we go live, whenever I release new videos, 
Um, and uh, I want to thank you guys, all, all the new members. There's a join button down below if you want to support the channel. It's totally cool too. I really appreciate every single one of you guys. So uh, yeah, so <laughs> so um, some wild stuff going on. New developments are coming out on a regular basis. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's got this re-election run and um, you know, uh, we're also going to talk about how her net worth vastly increased while uh, being in the White House. Yeah, there's a lot we need to talk about in, in just a second. So um, it has been confirmed former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced that she will be running for re-election in 2024. So Nancy Pelosi, she first revealed her plans at a breakfast with volunteers in San Francisco. Now, I'm, I'm about as shocked as you guys probably are. Nancy Pelosi, like, really? Like, when is this lady going to retire? Anyway, so Pelosi, she first revealed her plans in San Francisco with a bunch of volunteers. She followed up publicly with an announcement on Twitter, a.k.a. X, um, basically saying that the city needs to further its recovery and that she's all for liberty and justice for all and all that goodness. What do y'all think? Do we need Nancy Pelosi back in office? So anyway, this is why or this is this is why Nancy Nancy Pelosi claims she's running for reelection. But I want to know from you guys, do you really think that this is the only reason? Well, multimillionaire Grant Cardone, he got some thoughts on why Nancy Pelosi may very well be trying to get back in the office, right? So Nancy or uh, Greg Cardone, he was on this podcast. And while he was there, he was actually there to discuss business. But Grant Cardone took aim at some politicians, particularly U.S. Representative Nancy Pelosi. So it kind of started out with um, something that Grant Cardone had shared online about how poor politicians are going into Congress and they're coming out rich. Now, Cardone, Grant Cardone, he brought up Nancy Pelosi as an example, pointing out how she's never earned uh, any more than like $179,000 a year from her, uh, her official salary, but yet her net worth uh, is reportedly soared to like $120 million. Uh, yeah, and as Cardone said, she would have had to be in the Senate for like 3,367 years just to make that kind of money at her salary. So basically put, a government salary simply cannot justify that amount of wealth, certainly not within that, that short period of time. And according to Grant Cardone, if you make like $179,000 a year, you'll never be a millionaire, much less worth $120 million. Now, I got to slightly disagree with that. You could become a millionaire making one hundred seventy nine thousand dollars a year. Um, there's no question about that. Would you be worth one hundred twenty million? Oh, absolutely not. I, I highly doubt that. Mathematically, you'd have to be investing in all of the most explosive stocks with the highest rate of return and no losses year after year after year to make that happen. Or, uh, you know, invest in some startup as like, you know, one of the earlier uh, venture capitalist angel investors or something like that. And, and, and the company would just have to explode and, and basically turn into an Amazon overnight. So I just don't see that happening. Now, this is the part where people are going to say Nancy Pelosi needs to get kicked out of Congress. Right. And they may actually have a point. But Pelosi is just one example of how getting into Congress, getting into politics, just kind of ends up becoming the cheat code when it comes to accumulating wealth. And as they talked about in the podcast, some politicians may be benefiting from, shall we say, undisclosed financial opportunities, right? <laughs> so, you know, we talk about it all the time. How do some politicians amass so much wealth while serving in public office, right? I mean, just take Nancy Pelosi, for example, right? So Pelosi first became the Speaker of the House back in 2007, held the position until 2011. She then picked up the gavel again in 2019, and she, she served until the end of, of this Congress. And at that, in that period of time, her net worth saw a significant uptick right since 2008, largely 
thanks to her husband, Paul Pelosi, who's made his mark as a venture capitalist and a property investor. So, you know, it's really hard to say exactly how much richer Pelosi has gotten since her first term as speaker in 2007. But some of these reports are suggesting that she's among the wealthier members of Congress. For example, 2021, the Washington Free Beacon, which is a conservative news outlet, uh, they estimated that Nancy Pelosi's net worth could be as high as $171.4 million. Now, they figured this out by looking at some of the assets and uh, the liabilities that were listed in her financial disclosure. And so they also estimated then that Nancy Pelosi's net worth had risen by $140 million since 2008. Now, forget about index funds, forget about mutual funds, conservative REITs, or real estate investment trusts as an investment. I wanna know what she's got. I want what she's having, right? Um, anyway, so by 2020, the nonprofit OpenSecrets.org pegged her net worth at about $115 million. This is a this is a $41 million increase from 2004. Now, a lot of this wealth comes from her husband's company, Financial Leasing uh, Services, which at the same time as Nancy Pelosi has been the House Speaker, it has been highly, highly successful in its investments. And those include um, those those investments have included shares in such firms such as you may have heard of some of these companies, Disney, Amazon, Google. And many people wonder, was there any kind of inside knowledge that would have helped them to know which companies to buy and when? I'm going to leave that to you guys. What do you think? Was, do you think politicians get inside information uh, in order to make some of the smarter, more savvy stock investment choices? Let me know what y'all think on that one in the comments. So the New York Post reported that between 2007 and 2020, the Pelosi's earned between $5.6 million and $30 million just in capital gains and dividends from investments in major tech companies, major tech firms like Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft. Now, sure, you're going to hear uh, the same old company line about all stock transactions are under her husband's name and uh, Nancy Pelosi isn't involved in them at all. But th come on, really? You're going to tell me that husband and wife ain't talking about how their day went at work? You know what I'm saying? They're not going to talk about any kind of stock investment decisions that they're making. Really, guys? Now, despite all of this, Nancy Pelosi has faced some criticism, even from within her own Democratic Party, for dragging her feet on a proposed ban on stock trading um, you know, by members of Congress. Although initially opposed to the ban, Nancy Pelosi later kind of seemed to have a, a change of heart. She ended up supporting it. However... No such ban has been enacted. Wonder why. So fast forward to September, Representative Abigail Spanberger, she expressed frustration over Nancy Pelosi's handling of legislation that would require lawmakers to put their investment assets in a blind trust, criticizing her for what she sees as stalling and evasiveness. It's part of why Spanberger believes that it is now time for new leadership in the Democratic Party. But what do y'all think? Do we need some new leadership in the Democratic Party? Do we need new leadership just in Congress, period? Let me know what y'all think on that. Will, will, will Nancy Pelosi take up the reins again when she runs uh, for re-election in November? Let me know if you guys think that she's going to take that one. I, I'm, I'm curious to know what y'all think on that one. But uh, let me jump up in the comments. Let me see what you guys are saying. We got, we got Kim D in the house. We got Mark Cox. We got... Uh, Trump train 2024 FJB. <laughs> oh my God. Um, Jenny, Jenny Van Prince. Hi, Ron. I got the popcorn with my butter. Enjoying the show. Oh, that is awesome. I appreciate you. I'm glad you're, you are enjoying the show. Hey guys, if you haven't already, do hit the like button, share this video all over Facebook and Twitter. Dallas Haskins Gamings. What's up? Yo, I see you in the comments. Uh, we got Tex Edwards. What's going on from Wisconsin? Uh, let's see. 
uh, Marie Kamel, M Marie Kamel, uh, Diddy has been doing this more than 20 years. Oh man. Uh, Folly, Folly Surf Angel 99 says, I'm praying she is voted out. How many of you guys are praying that Nancy Pelosi gets voted out? Oh, I could tell you. Thank you. you. But you're the best, too. You're the best, too. I appreciate you. Um, but how many of you guys are voting or hoping that um, that that Nancy Pelosi gets voted out? Uh, Jody Samurai says uh, Jay-Z is getting exposed. You know, I heard, you know, I heard Jay-Z and, uh, you know, another a number of other uh, big name rappers are, are getting exposed. And it's funny because 50 Cent has been um, basically letting letting this he was basically blowing the whistle like 10 years ago but nobody believed him hell i didn't believe him either i, I used to hear 50 say always talking about these diddy parties and what was going on and i'm like man whatever that's not really happening you know if i don't see pics i don't believe it and lo and behold here we are today it's just crazy it's crazy uh where are you guys watching from i got i got ui from uh aloha grace from lahaina oh we got somebody from lahaina from the Lahaina Island in Maui on here. That is what's up. Uh, it was really tragic what you guys had gone through uh, not that long ago, honestly. Um, my prayers have gone out to your families, uh, to those who were involved in the Maui wildfires, uh, probably co close to a year ago. Uh, I hope you and your family weren't too, uh, too negatively impacted, but that was pretty bad. Uh, we got Shelly. Uh, Shelly saying that Ice Cube has been talking too. Wow, we got um, we got Thomas Delacour from the UK. What's going on? Oh man, uh, Christine Christine Edie from New Zealand. New Zealand loves you, Ron. Aw, appreciate you. RSC from Texas. We got Elena from Long Island, New York. Man, we got folks all over the world in this chat. This is a beast. We got Robin Spielman from Rocky Mountains of Utah here. You know who else is in Utah? My man, Stephen Gardner. Um, I know a lot of you guys watch him. Uh, we had him on the show not too long ago. Uh, that's my buddy. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. If you haven't already, do hit the like buttons uh, and, and share this video with you know a friend. Um, if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel. I totally appreciate you guys. You are absolutely amazing. And, uh, and I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Oh, don't forget to check out that previous video, Donald Trump uh, in, in the Chick-fil-A. Uh, it's like two lives back. All right. Have a good night, guys.